Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about July 30th, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, I, I really like this slate a lot. Um, it's a you know four game slate, um, but with three games being really close to each other, I think we will hopefully have an edge here um, just based on our matchup analysis and um, hopefully the matchup slash kill upside analysis that we will have here today. So yeah, let's dive in. And the LPL, uh, well, first of all, a quick recap of yesterday's slate. Um, we actually got most of it right. Um, hopefully, you know, my video helped uh, you guys to cash with Weibo Gaming. And then I saw, you know, I told you guys that KT, you know, is a live dog. So hopefully you guys played some KT because that really was a big upset, but I definitely could see KT pull that off based on their recent form that they're in. And, you know, people now starting to kind of hop on that KT bandwagon now, but, you know, it's been an interesting roller coaster for that, um, for that franchise, for KT Rollster, but Damon Kia knew that they, they would, you know, they looked a little shaky here and there throughout the split. So, so hopefully that helped. Um, hopefully we continue our hot streak here today. Um, in the LPL, it's Rare Adam versus EDG. Um, I just feel like Rare Adam has no chance, no shot. I just don't see, I see like one path maybe of Rare Adam pulling this off, maybe through, no. <laughs> I don't. Um, maybe like through Junjia used to play for Rare Adam, um, but now he plays for EDG. So maybe Rare Adam knows like the coaching staff and Leanne, the jungler for Rare Adam, know the tendencies for Junjia and maybe they can expose that and exploit that. I don't know. But Junjia actually has been a better jungler for EDG over JJ. So I really, you know, prefer Junjia starting here at jungle for EDG. So EDG has looked much better with Junjia being the more aggressive jungler for EDG and kind of mesh well with his team here today. And EDG, yeah, and EDG has a lot of the playoff implications. And I told you yesterday that Weibo Gaming also has playoff implications. And they, you know, even talked about that, even the post-game interview. Um, so it kind of aligns with what our, thought, our thinking was um, that helped the players to stay motivated and stay focused uh, throughout the games and throughout the series to win over the LGD team that was hopeless yesterday. So, and I fully expect the same thing for EDG. Um, I believe um, Weibo Gaming actually secured a playoff spot today and EDG can do the same by securing a win here today. I know Weibo Gaming here is nine and four. Um, EDG can uh, go up to nine and five here with the win today um that's interesting that rng only has nine and two so they'll have one game today nine and three ten and two so edg definitely needs this win to secure a playoff spot um i fully expect them to win um i mean that you see here rare adam they're on a five game losing streak and they're one of the bottom tier teams to uh this uh, this summer split um i just don't see any path like i said other than maybe that kind of former teammate narrative against Junja, but you know you look at each individual matchup in the lanes i mean flandre over cube Junja over leanne and eh, they're probably about the same leanne actually his stats are really good for jungle control percentage for that team um scout over strive viper and mako over iboy and yuyanja for sure so yeah i don't think i'm gonna be playing any at rare adam but you know Rare Adam probably gives you the most leverage here today, um, just based on the odds. They're the biggest underdog on the slate. They're the cheapest on the DK salaries. So if they pull it off, they can pull it off. But EDG is also notoriously known for not giving up a lot of debts in their losses. Um, and Rare Adam is, you know, the, the, I've seen Rare Adam also score pretty low for, you know, DFS purposes, even in their wins. So, I mean, there are a lot of factors that go against um, playing Rare Adam pieces here today. Um, I just don't see, I just don't see myself playing Rare Adam today. But EDG, on the other hand, yeah, I mean, EDG looks, you know, has looked pretty good recently. Um, you know, and their combined kills per minute is pretty fast. Let me check. Let's check that out real quick. Um, LPL. This is the website that I use for those of you who may not 
have watched my videos, um, this is the website that I use for stats and data. Uh, data. Uh, LPL team stats, uh, EDG, and then rare atom. So you see here uh, combined kills per minute, which measures the kill upside for me, average combined kills per minute. Um, 0 0.80 for rare atom and then 0.76 so about 0.78 um, on average between these two teams which you know it's pretty fast rng versus edg marquee matchup of the lpl slate or lpl week weekend um two top teams going at each other here as you can see here jdg is in the second place um you know, right behind TES, Top Esports, and then RNG his, is in the fourth place. They're really just playing for, let's see, they're just playing for playoff seeding purposes. I do think the top two teams, I do know that the top two teams have benefits um, if they finish top two going into the playoffs. Yeah, you see here, seed one and seed two, uh, you know, get automatically placed all the way in round four of the summer playoffs. So you want to finish in top two. So I think that gives motivation to both teams, JDG and RNG, to kind of stay focused. JDG is on a six game winning streak, six series winning streak, and then RNG is on a five series winning streak. Both teams are hot, so I think it's more than important, uh, more than ever important to kind of analyze the individual matchups. And I'll tell you why I prefer JDG. So RNG has been a little shaky over the summer split. Um, I know they were really bad um, at the beginning of the summer split. Um, I, when I say really bad, I mean, they were pretty bad. They did not have anything going in terms of team chemistry and synergies, um, especially Xiao, who has been, you know, he was really down uh, by a lot of, um, you know, uh, just by a lot of metrics that he was one of the worst mid laners to begin the summer split. And I know that they just swapped uh, Ben and Breathe in the top lane uh, between RNG and BLG and Breathe coming in kind of, I feel like it kind of disrupted um, their team chemistry. Um, after RNG having won the midseason tournament, midseason invitational tournament over T1. Um, so RNG coming off of that hot streak between the some spring and summer split, um, they struggled a bit. They had a little lull uh, where they were still kind of looking for their team identity with Breathe, you know, uh, you know, kind of plugged into the lineup. Breathe pr plays a little differently than Ben. So, you know, that's been a big change for that team, I think. You know, uh, Breathe is, you know, he likes to kind of, you know, stay with the team a little more than Ben, um, which kind of um, threw off Wei in jungle and Xiaohu in the mid lane, I feel like, um, just based on their game style that they've been, they were playing into. Um, but now, like the last three, four weeks, RNG has been really good. Xiaohu is gaining, regaining his form. Um, Gala and Ming have been solid. I say Gala has probably the, been the most consistent player for that team. And then Ming has been really good as well. Um, so the bottom lane is probably the strongest suit for RNG. Um, and on the other hand, though, JDG, Hope and Missing have been really, really good. Um, I say they have not been as good as Gala and Ming, but I, I'd say they're very serviceable and they're probably in the top tier JD uh, AD carry bottom uh, bottom lane duo that I would put up there against anybody including Botic and PP God for V5 and top esports has been really good with with Jackie Love and you know Mark as well but I really do think Hope and Missing have been playing really well but you know the strength has been for JDG has been in the top lane and the jungle 369 has been playing really well lately and Kanavi probably one of the best junglers in the LPL um, I know after JDG missed the playoffs last split, they were really mad. Um, JDG has kind of come back um, with the same roster with Vengeance um, in their mind, and I, it's showing in their plays. Um, JDG is notorious, has been notoriously known this split, uh, though going to game three um, all the way in the series 
And against elite teams like RNG, that's not um, a good sign because RNG is definitely more than capable of, you know, winning that series over JDG. If JDG makes that kind of mistake or takes take takes a game off in that series, but I do think that's a mismatch though. Three six nine and Kanavi versus Breathe and Way. Um, that's probably the the primary reason why I like JDG here today. And for me, I've seen JDG do team fights, um, engage in team fights much better than RNG. And I like the picks and bans that JDG has for, uh, set forth in the most recent matches. Uh, with Yumi, Yumi bands and picks. I mean, I like JDG's chances here today. I do think Kanavi, you know, uh, he's going to want to play really well um, against RNG that has beat JDG in the last uh, spring split. So I really do like JDG here today. Um, I know I'll probably get exposure to both teams, though. I do think, you know, as much as uh, as much of a high kill upside that JDG has, um, that also translates to RNG's kill upside as well for the matchup. So I do think um, playing both teams and, you know, not a game stack, but, you know, just playing, having exposure in multiple lineups, you know, with exposure to both teams here, RNG and JDG, I think makes sense today. Um, I do think, you know, for match, my match prediction, I'm going to go with JDG. Um, they've been playing a little bit better, in my opinion. They have a higher ceiling. Um, even though RNG um, probably is, has been a little more consistent. Um, um, but JDG, I like JDG, you know, when they play against elite teams, they've been showing up today uh, in the summer split. So I, I, I'll, I expect the same for JDG today. And the LCK, it's the top four, probably four of the top five teams that are playing today. Um, I I say top I say four out of the top five because Damon Kia is not playing tonight. They they play this morning. Um, it's actually you know T, actually T one Genji the marquee matchup of the summer split or any LCK matchup. I think that's the best matchup you can get. Um, earlier in the spring split, T one has beat Genji, or you know earlier earlier um, in the season T one actually beat Genji where all the experts, both um, the English commentators and the Korean commentators, every single one of them picked, picked uh, Genji to win that matchup. But T1 ended up winning two to one that, that series. Um, but I'll get to that series here in, the, here in a second. But first, DRX versus Lift Sandbox. This is an interesting matchup because DRX's form has been up and down, um, whereas Sandbox is... Plan playing really well, but they've been up and down as well the past week or so. Um, Closer actually has been playing really well. Um, don't give him a Kali. <laughs> Closer has been, you know, pretty lights out um, on a Kali on that champion, but I'm sure DRX will be more than capable of banning that champion or just, you know, strategizing their, their picks and bans against that. Um, and DRX, Zika, I mean, has been playing really well. In my opinion, he's been the best player for DRX and going up against closer. I think that's going to be neutralized any advantage for either, either team there. Um, Deft and Barrel, obviously very experienced, but haven't been as playing well. Um, whereas Prince and Kale has have so much potential and Prince has been playing really well. Croco, on the other hand, has been a little more aggressive jungler than before, which I think Sandbox players as teammates, you know, really like. And Piosik has been more consistent player jungler for DRX, where he hasn't been as aggressive, but actually better macro play for that team. And in the top lane, Kangan definitely has an advantage over Dove, um, but Dove is a serviceable top laner. So, so yeah, where do I go from there? I don't know. I mean, this is a very good question for DRX and Sandbox. I do think this uh, matchup is going to produce more kills than the T1 versus Gen G matchup. T1 Gen G, when they play against each other, I mean, they're really two elite teams, you know, um, and the LCK typically, you know, two elite teams, when they go against each other, they tend to, you know, reduce the number of mistakes that they, you know, they make, which also translates into playing safer and more cautious and not make as many um, team fight, uh, engage in team fights and take a risk. Um, so that kind of, you know, sometimes translates more than often translates into lower kills uh, for the matchup. So I do think, um, you know, that 
matchup between T1 and Gen.G will be low in kills. Whereas DRX and Lift Sandbox, I think it'll be interesting. Um, Sandbox likes the team likes the team fight a lot. So I do think, you know, that increases the kill upside for both teams, both DRX and Sandbox. Now for the match prediction, um, I'm going to have to go with DRX, I think. I like Zika's uh, um, matchup against Closer. Um, even though Closer has been hot, they, he has been playing against some bad teams um, where, where he showed up against bad teams, bad mid laners. And Zika, like I said, has been the best mid laner for DRX, and I like him, his chances against Closer. And like I said, Depth and Barrel are very experienced, and I feel like they will know how to go up go up against Prince and Kale. I'm a little worried about Piosek versus Croco matchup in the in the jungle, but Piosek actually has been playing a bit better after, especially when he got benched um, for Juhan. I like Piosek coming back with um, a little more, you know, fire in his belly and motivation. And, you know, I think he is a little bit more focused to play better um, for DRX. So I'm going to have to go with DRX here to win. Um, I think the odds are really good if you are straight up better for DRX. Um, I like DRX to win the series. And then in the second LCK matchup, it's between T1 and Gen.G, like I said. I like Gen.G here today. Um, I know I picked T1 in that last head-to-head. But Genji's form, in my opinion, has been better. They've been just crushing and smashing teams, especially Ruler and Lahans. I think they've been in better form than Gumayushi and Karia have been. I like Jovi over Faker um, in terms of the gameplay. And frankly, yeah, not based on the current meta that they're in, I, I like Genji's chances to be more proactive and aggressive. <coughs> and, and, you know, on the map. Um, Peanut has been playing decent. Owner has been lights out as well for Zeus. Like I said, I mean, these two teams are really good. So um, anything can happen, but I'm going to have to go with Gen G with Vengeance here today um, over T1. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, like I said, I've already talked about the kill upside. I've already talked about the match predictions. I like EDG, JDG. Uh, DRX and Gen G here tonight. Um, but if you guys have any other questions or just want to chat League of Legends, let me know. Um, this video has been sponsored by True DFS, so go check out uh, their Twitter or their YouTube channel, which on with onto which this video has been uploaded. Um, and Patreon, my website uh, for Patreon that has my exact match predictions and some favorite plays, uh, as well as some prize picks, profits. If you're interested, come check it out. Otherwise, yeah, good luck, everybody, and hope to, hope, to, hope to see you guys at the top of the leaderboard. Have a good one. Have a good night, and have a good weekend. Bye.